Okay, so I've had plenty of comments and questions throughout the history of soft flour tortillas recipe videos that I posted on YouTube, whether you can freeze this and use it at a later date. I recently had someone reach out to me on Instagram, so here's the video. Okay, so here I have three cups of all-purpose flour, uh, two teaspoons of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, I'm gonna give that a mix. And if you want the full soft flour tortillas recipe, I will link several that I've done throughout my history of YouTube, being on YouTube. Uh, you should be able to find those helpful for a more detailed recipe. Okay, so when freezing it in the freezer, I know in the recipe you could use lard, shortening, butter. I find the use of oil for some reason helps to keep the texture when freezing it. So that's what I'm doing today. So first I am going to add three tablespoons of oil. Okay, so I've added my oil. I'm gonna give that a little mix. And now I'm going to slowly add in my hot water. This is one cup of hot water. I always like to add like three quarters of a cup, work it in, and then add more if needed. So I actually added only three tablespoons of um, cooking oil, but you can work in three tablespoons to a quarter of a cup. Okay, so at this point my dough, I just combined it. I have not kneaded it for that 10 minute span. So what I'm going to do is continue kneading it. I'm actually going to roll them out and show you how to store them. It's two different ways that you can store them. Now, if you just want to store them in the dough balls, you don't have to go crazy with the kneading. Just combine it, knead it for about five minutes and divide it into your dough balls. But since I am going to press or roll these out, I do want it to go through the full kneading resting process. So I'm gonna continue kneading for about another five minutes. Okay. So I kneaded this until the dough springs back. It's not super smooth, but it'll do. So now I'm just going to divide these. I'm actually gonna divide it. Normally I, do, I get like 14. I'm going to divide it into about 15 dough balls. And then I just kind of do this little tuck and turn. And it's just kind of smoothing out the top and then kind of tucks it under the bottom. And then I'll just place it back into the bowl. Okay, so my dough is divided into 15 dough balls. So at this point, you could put each dough ball in a single layer on a baking sheet and freeze them individually. You wanna make sure you cover it with wax paper and cling film or even aluminum foil. It just helps retain the moisture because the name of the game to get a good texture tortilla is to you know have it soft, pliable, and that means moisture. So if it dries out in that process, it's going to be hard to thaw and roll out. So I think it's probably better to roll them out and store them already rolled out. So when you thaw out, all you gotta do is cook it. Because if you're rolling it out, um, I do find that it does kind of, you know, get this dried exterior and it kind of gets it a little harder to roll out. You can still do it, but texturally the dough does just, it dries out. That's just the natural process of dough. Flour tortillas, you know, I always say they are best eaten within like that 12 to 24 hour window. They do, not, they do not reheat well. I don't care how much fat and water you put in them. Um, if you're making them from scratch, they, they just dry out. So anyways, I'm going to let them rest for 15 minutes at least. Resting is key. You've worked up the gluten, now you gotta let it relax. That's gonna help you roll them out a lot better. If you ever roll out tortillas, here's a tip. I'm gonna be giving you tips through here. Um, if you roll out tortillas and you're like, ah, oh, it, you know, it keeps shrinking back. That's because the gluten is still too tough. It needs to relax more. So let it rest. This is going to rest. While it's resting, I want to give you some extra tips. So tip number one, when you're creating your dough, if you do not weigh out the measurements that I place below the video, um, you'll want to add water. I, I typically give you the eight fluid ounces or a cup of hot, warm to hot water. If you find that your dough is still too dry, add water a tablespoon at a time until it comes together. Now, if you put all the ingredients together, you've measured it out and you're like, hey, this is just too tacky, sticky and wet. I can't even create a dough ball. It's just sticking everywhere. Then add a tablespoon of flour, 
um, until the dough comes together. Just add it a tablespoon at a time. The key is to get a soft, pliable dough because then your end result will be soft and pliable. So this is going to rest. And that's the third tip or the second tip. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> um, you want to let your dough rest. Again, going back to when you're rolling it out. If you add too much flour during the rollout process, that flour is going to work back into the dough. It's going to do one of two things. Definitely it's gonna dry out the dough and it's going to work the gluten again. So it's gonna to get tough and shrink back. So that's why resting is key. So you'll notice in my past videos, I like to roll like two or three out and hang them over the side of the bowl. Let them rest before it hits the hot pan, which brings me to another tip. You want to make sure that you heat your griddle cast iron skillet, pan, whatever you're using, you heat it right until smoke point, right? You'll see like tiny wisps of smoke on the surface of your, your hot griddle. That's kind of where you want it to be. Now, if it's smoking out of control, that's too hot. You're gonna end up burning this before it has any chance to cook on the inside. So it really depends on your heat source and just practice makes perfect. You, you gotta make a few mistakes to get to where you need to be when making flour tortillas, at least in my opinion and in my experience. Um, okay, so this is resting. Those were a couple of tips. So after this rest, I'll show you what I do next. All right, it's almost time for me to start rolling these out, but I wanna show you. So this is the way I store them. If you have a, a craftier, more resourceful way to store them, go for it. But I just have these little thin sheets of wax paper that I just kind of tear into. Basically, I wanna make sure it's enough to, you know, cover the surface of the, the rolled out tortilla. And I have my um, Ziploc here, or my, you know, storage baggie, whatever Ziploc, whatever you have. This is a reusable one. And after I stack them up, I'm gonna place them in here. And this is what I store them in the freezer with. And because I separate them with the wax paper, if I just wanna take one or two out of the freezer and cook them and store the rest back into the freezer for later use, I can. So to roll these out, I, I do like to keep them covered with a damp cloth. Um, I'm just going to take one and kind of cover the rest. You don't want them to dry out while you're, while you're doing this, but just lightly flour your surface. I'm going to flour my rolling pin and then just roll out. And again, if you're doing this and it's shrinking back too much, it just needs to rest. So, and I need to flour this a little bit more. There we go. And I find that rolling them out as thin as you can get them works. And I know I get a lot of questions about using a tortilla press. You can do that. I don't have much luck using a tortilla press. I, I can't get them quite as thin as I'd like if I'm using a press, which is why I prefer to roll them out. But I will say this. So if you need to use a stand mixer to mix and knead, go for it. If you need to use a press, definitely works. But here it is. So this is my first one. So again, just going to place it on this wax paper and to make sure it doesn't dry out, just do that. And I actually, my husband pre-cut these for me. <laughs> That's why they're a little big. Um, but I'm probably going to just kind of fold them around the edges when they're all stacked up to fit into my baggie. Just like that. So I'm gonna repeat the process until I have them all rolled out. Okay, so I have 10 rolled out. I have wax sheets of wax paper in between each one because if you store them all together, even if you put flour in between them, they will freeze together and you won't be able to just take individual ones when you want to eat just one or two. So you wanna make sure you do that. So now I'm just going to place them into my storage baggie, my freezer safe storage baggie. And the dough is very soft, so for that reason, Oops, that one kind of came out. I am going to put them in the freezer on the flat baking sheet. This will ensure that they keep their shape and they freeze. They freeze well. Okay, so here they are. I'm going to leave them on this baking sheet. And actually, you want to make sure you press out, carefully press out most of the air from your baggie. There we go. Okay, 
going into the freezer. Okay, so this has been in the deep freezer. Oh yeah, this is frozen. I'm taking this out and I'm going to show you just super easy. You separate what you're going to use and thaw. These are definitely frozen, so you guys don't think I'm like lying here. So let's say I'm going to just cook two. Oh, there it goes. And because they're thin, they're not going to take that long to thaw. I'll put one. And there you go. They separate so easy. And I have those to cook also, so I'm just going to, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to actually put the rest of them back right into my freezer. Okay, so as you can see, my tortilla is kind of floppy, so it's pretty much thawed. That literally took like... A minute for it to thaw completely. So I have my griddle here preheating on a medium high heat and it, it just depends like what type of pan you're using. I like to use cast iron skillet if it's easy to access. This one was the one closest to the front of my storage space so I grabbed it. Um, and you want to bring this up to temperature like I said when you start seeing just barely wisp of smoke. I remember my grandmother would get a little bit of water and throw it onto the griddle and if it started to like pop and dance she knew it was time, so you can do that. This is completely thawed, it's rolled out, and since it's been frozen and hanging out, it it's, doesn't need to rest, it should puff up. So here we go. Put that on your comal. I am gonna turn it just a little higher. And at this point, within the first 10 seconds, you should start see, to see something happen with your tortilla. Bubbles should start to form. As you can see, they're starting to form right here. That is a good sign. The heat is where it needs to be. If you don't see that and it takes too long, that means you're going to end up with a cracker-like dry tortilla. That's not what you want. So as you can see, it has completely bubbled all around. That means the heat is, is where it needs to be. I'm going to let this go for another five seconds and then I'm going to flip. And when I flip it, it should continue to bubble. Sometimes I can get it to completely puff up with air. The key is to resting the dough after you've rolled it out and the griddle needs to be right before smoke point. And now if it's too smoky, that means it's too hot. So again, everyone's heat source is different. It's calibrated different. So it's something you're going to have to learn through practice. So I'm gonna give this a flip. Yeah and that's cooking quite nicely. Okay, so I still have these that I'm going to roll out for dinner, but I want to show you the two <laughs> that I made. And take a look at that. Perfectly soft, fresh flour tortillas, homemade right in your kitchen. It can be all yours. So I will definitely leave links to detailed recipes for soft flour tortillas. I have several videos and you guys if you always wonder why is she putting out another tortilla video? Because there's always information that I can share with you as I learn and get better at cooking. So this is why I do things like that. But yeah, I hope you have as much success as I do. I love to make soft flour tortillas for my family. So I hope this video helps you guys. <laughs> I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching. <laughs>